Hello and welcome to the first in a series on introductory synthesis. My name is John and we're demonstrating here with the Mungo State Zero synthesizer. I'm just going to run you through the, the basic signals that we receive and use to drive the modules of a contemporary analog or patchable synthesizer. The first signal here is a gate signal and this is triggered every time a note is pressed. Over on the oscilloscope here we can see the gates coming on and off as I'm pressing some keys on a keyboard. In monophonic mode we have a single gate that comes on and off and on this instrument we're polyphonic and we have eight voices that go around. The outputs here of the oscilloscope are the yellow and blue traces are two polyphonic outputs linked to the left and right and the green trace is a monophonic connection to the last cable patched. This shows us here the output of the eight voices each sending out their gates and the voice assigner coming round and every eighth note is on the one that we're viewing with the monophonic view. Back on the monophonic mode we're one to one again Down through these other signals, we can receive the velocity of keys. This saves the velocity of the last key pressed, even after the gate has been released. The pitch bender, which operates bidirectionally, and the modulation wheel, which goes in one direction only. Down on the noise source, the last group here is the noise source. Looking on the oscilloscope output, we also have a spectrum analysis on this red trace here, and that again follows the green signal of whatever was last connected. Our flat spectrum across this red trace here indicates that we have white noise present. Coming down further, we have a section which decodes gate signals from the MIDI clock. Here we have it at 120 BPM and we have a nice 50% duty cycle square wave there. The oscilloscope auto scales the traces to try and keep three or four cycles on the screen at any one time. In the top right hand corner we have a period counter here telling us that this signal has a period of approximately a half a second. This matches up with our 120 BPM at quarter notes and that's also switchable up to eighths and sixteenths. Again, the display automatically changing the time base to try and keep three or four cycles on the screen at any one time. At sixteenths, we now have one eighth of a second. Complementary to the gate of the clock is the rate of the clock. This is a signal which tells us whether the clock is running fast or slow. As we reduce the tempo, we see this signal go down. And as we increase the tempo, we see this come up. This operates in the same manner as the CV, or control voltage, for the note data that we receive up in here. A traditional CV and gate controlled synthesizer uses this signal to represent the pitch whilst the gate represents the notes being played and this as we play down the keyboard descends and as we go up the keyboard ascends. If we play octaves on this, 
we see that a step between the octaves is even. This is the volts per octave tuning method and it allows us through some clever maths to use an offset to provide a constant interval between two pitches which we can demonstrate using two oscillators and the mod wheel. So here we have two oscillators operating in phase and tracking each other in frequency as we play the keyboard. As I increase the value on the mod wheel, I can add an offset to the control voltage of one of the oscillators, and if I hold that at a constant value, the two frequencies remain at a steady difference. Up here at a perfect fifth, we can see an XY plot of the two output signals, giving us some information about the frequency and phase relationship of the two. These Lasagis curves will be visited in the next episode about oscillators.